Segment 21, the Doppler effect. One of the key tools that astronomers need is the ability to measure the relative motion of objects with respect to the Earth or the Sun, and also internal motions within objects. These tell us an enormous amount about the location of the objects, their relationships with each other kinematically, and about internal properties of the objects. In order to do this, we make use of the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect is the change in tone or the change in wavelength or frequency of a sound or a, an electromagnetic wave as a result of the relative motion. So take the example of a fire truck moving along in one towards one observer and away from another observer. If there's a bell on the fire truck that clangs every second, when you're being approached by the fire truck, after a second the fire truck is a bit closer to you, so the next clang takes less time to get to you. So the clangs appear closer together than they would if the truck were sitting still, whereas if you're behind the truck, every second the truck's a little farther away, and the next clang has a little bit farther to go to get to you, so the frequency at which the clangs get to you is a, a little bit lower than it would be if the truck were sitting still. So on the one side you see a higher frequency of clangs, and on the other a lower as a result of the motion of the truck towards one observer and away from the other. If we Imagine now a spherical wave being emitted from a point source, as we see here on the left. As that source generates the waves, the waves have it, are evenly spaced as, the, say, a cork bobs up and down in a lake, or you send out a, a radio wave in, in all directions. But now imagine that source moving with respect to the observers. On the one side, just as with the clanging of the bell, the waves will be leaving the source just a little bit closer to the destination than, they, than the, the previous wave left, or on the left side, just a little bit farther from the destination. So on the, on the right side, where you're being approached, the frequency goes higher, and on the left, where you're, you're being receded from, the frequency just gets a little bit lower. As you go around a circle from the original position of the source, you'll see that the frequency of the, w of, of the signal that's getting to you, or the wavelength of the radiation, is changing as you go around that circle from being a shorter wavelength on the right to being a much longer wavelength on the left. It's important to remember that the that the towards and away is the critical point here. The Doppler shift is a result of radial motion, that is the motion towards or away from you. Sideways motion does not alter the frequency or the wavelength. Let's just look at the quantitative uh, relationship here. The Doppler formula says that the change in wavelength divided by the wavelength for uh, electromagnetic radiation is equal to the velocity that the object is moving towards or away from you divided by the speed of light. The convention is that the velocity is positive when the distance is growing, when the object's moving away, because the change in distance is increasing, so that's a positive velocity. So let's give a, a, a concrete problem set type example. We have gas in the Orion Nebula. It emits a line of hydrogen, atomic hydrogen, at 656.3 nanometers. This is the line that makes the nebula look red. When the Earth is moving towards Orion at 30 kilometers a second, how much does this line shift in wavelength and in which direction? So delta lambda over lambda uh, is equal to V over C. So if we multiply that equation both sides by lambda, we have delta lambda is equal to the wavelength lambda times V over C. So the wavelength is 656.3, and the velocity is minus 30 kilometers a second because we're moving towards the source. The speed of light is 300,000 kilometers a second. And when you multiply that all through, you wind up with a shift of minus 0 0.06563 nanometers. So the, um, the wavelength of the light gets shorter by about 0 0.07 nanometers in this example. Why did I pick 30 kilometers a second? Because that's the uh, orbital speed of the Earth around the Sun, so the actual velocity does change because of that. Um, this example here is one that more of you may be familiar with, which is a police radar uh, measuring in speed traps. And you'll notice that this is always done from a position just by the side of the road. If you look at, at Officer 1 and Officer 3, they're standing just off the side of the road and pointing their radar guns at the traffic. Officer 2 is being rather foolish. Why? Because while the car is speeding just as much when it goes by Officer 2, 
the Doppler shift only measures radial motion, motion towards or away. And since the car is going sideways with respect to the line of sight, Officer 2 fails to get an accurate reading of the speed. So in astronomy, there, there are different types of examples. One is actual motion. I talked before about the Earth, Earth's motion around the sun. So here on the left side, you see a, a, a spectrum of a star. And remember, before we talked about how you could plot the spectra as intensity versus wavelength. And here's a plot for different kinds of stars in the middle. And then you can blow up what one of these spectral lines, the absorption, the, the atomic transition of one particular line at a particular wavelength. Um, in this case, again, H alpha, the line we just talked about in the Orion case, but now an absorption in the stellar atmosphere. And as the Earth goes around the sun, that line will shift in, in position, uh, as will all of the lines, due to the relative motion of the Earth and the object. And on the lower right, you see an example where the red line is showing what the wavelength of that line would be in the laboratory. And the actual line is fairly broad, but that broad line shifts back and forth as the Earth goes around the sun. So we have to compensate for this effect when we measure the frequencies of lines in stars. Another example is in seeing rotation speed as of planets by radar. If you send a, a signal with just one frequency out because part of the planet's going away and part of the planet's coming towards as it rotates, that signal will be broadened in frequency coming back because some is shifted to longer wavelengths and some is shifted to shorter wavelengths because it's bouncing off pieces of the planet that are, are uh, receding or approaching. And another is in the discovery of unseen companions. As a, as a planet moves around another star, it shakes that star back and forth very slightly. And we can measure these small differences in the radial velocity of the star over time to get evidence for the existence of this other planet and learn things about the properties of its orbit, something we'll talk about when we talk about, about extrasolar planets later on. Another very useful effect is not bulk motion of the line at all, but something that affects the width of the lines. If you have a gas and you heat the gas up, the particles in the gas are moving more quickly. And so each individual atom might be red-shifted or blue-shifted by a bit more than it would be if the gas were cool. And so in a, in a star with a cooler atmosphere, you might expect to see somewhat narrower lines than you see in a star with a hotter atmosphere. Now, there are other effects, like rotation, for example, that we just talked about, and, and pressure effects that affect the shape of the line. But one of the effects that affects the shape of the line is this uh, thermal broadening. Hotter gas means broader lines due to the, the Doppler effect. So let's just go back and summarize. The Doppler effect the apparent change in the wavelength of an emitted wave due to the relative motion of the source in an observer. So when you see it, when you receive that wave, it'll be at a different wavelength slightly due to this motion. And this is a very powerful tool for measuring all kinds of, of kinematic effects in astronomical objects.